<laughs> so, many of you know who I am. Some of you do not. I am Jeff Matson. I currently work for Rocket Genius, who creates gravity forms. I am the head of documentation for them. Um, haven't been there long, though. Before then, I was at Emotion Hosting. A lot of people learned from me from there. Um, I've actually worked at Rocket Genius for about two weeks. Um, so, fairly new, but uh, making some gigantic strides. Um, so that's me. You can follow me at the Jeff Matson, as well as Rocket Genius. There. I'm sure most of you are. But let's get started on some documentation. Now, who takes documentation and says this is part of my core development process? Yeah. That's actually more than the last time I did this talk. <laughs> um, but all of you should be doing this. Now, how many of you feel like your documentation sucks? Perfect. <laughs> we'll get there. So let's take a look at why we need to write better documentation. Sometimes I don't. But I got this last version. So why do we need to write better documentation? We need to reduce support tickets. The support tickets suck. We're going to make sure we keep that to a low number. You're going to enhance customer satisfaction. Make sure your customers don't cancel on you and say, your product sucks. And documentation can dramatically increase traffic. And from there, it can also make it easier on your support reps as well. And we'll go into each one of those in just a minute. So let's first take a look at support ticket reduction. How many of you have way too many support tickets? Now, of course, those numbers can go lower. Even if you don't feel like you have too many support tickets, as your product gets bigger, they'll roll in. You want to keep that, keep those to the smallest amount possible. If your customers are contacting you to do something stupid nonstop, you have something you need to change. Users, most of the time, will be able to solve their own problems if it's properly documented. Most of the time. You do have those customers that contact you every day for something they could have easily looked up, but we're going to try to keep those to a minimal at least. You're going to make your customers happy. Don't make them dig for information. If I have to spend more than five minutes looking for the information I'm looking for, you're not doing it right. You want to increase traffic. If done properly, documentation can be a massive traffic source way more than any other source out there. It's absolutely incredible. We go a little deeper into that in just a minute on how you can actually go about generating more traffic to your site using your documentation. <clears throat> you can get branding from related search terms. Believe it or not, if you're searching for a contact form, there's plenty out there. But if we outrank all of you on our documentation, you're likely going to choose us. Even though there are maybe other free, free solutions out there, if we're providing better documentation, likely you're going to choose us. And that documentation will likely convert to sales. If you're searching for a solution, for example, you're searching for a contact form solution, and you need to, for example, take PayPal payments from that contact form, and you search for PayPal payments through a contact form, if we come up first, you're likely going to buy it. If somebody else is coming up first, you're likely going to buy that. Good documentation shows you care. Show the love. If you help a customer after they purchased it, they, they see that you're really helping them, and even after the sale, that you'll continue helping them. If you have crappy documentation, I'm going to look at your product and go, well, they're not helping people before the sale, they're not helping them after the sale, there's no documentation, there's nothing to help me in the future. Who do I call? I'm on my own? It's probably not a good solution for me because something's going to come up that I'm going to need help with. You want to give your support reps a helping hand. How many of you are support reps? How many times are you frustrated all day long? You say these customers will not stop bugging me about this stupid issue. Well, if there's documentation on it. A lot of times those support tickets decrease as well as you can direct them to a customer support article that says how to do something. If you're writing something 10 times a day and you couldn't just set them an article and send them a link, you're doing something wrong. Like I said, it's multiple times. 
So how can you make your documentation better? You assume that your customers have a fifth grade education. Write in the absolute simplest way possible. In my documentation, I even include logging to your WordPress dashboard. Believe it or not, people will come in there and say, I don't know where to follow these steps. I don't know where to go from here. Well, log in first and then follow the steps. Well, if you write that as your first step, they know to do that. <clears throat> write it in very, very simple. Writing it in simple language also helps people that are translating that content. Google Translate does a good job, but it doesn't do everything perfectly. If I'm talking with a college education, or I'm speaking with a college education person, if I'm speaking with a college education, likely somebody who's translating that content isn't quite going to understand exactly what I'm trying to say. But if I speak to somebody in a way that I assume that they're five years old, I'm going to use very basic language and it's going to be extremely easy to translate. Use visuals. Pictures are great. Videos are even better. If you can direct somebody to a picture, a tutorial with a lot of pictures, or even a video, they're more likely to follow that content. A lot of times when I was in Inmotion, you'd send a customer an article, and they say, I don't want to read that. Just do it for me. They're not helping themselves, and they're, they're, they're irritating you because they don't want to follow your content and you follow your instructions. But if you put pictures in it, there's a dramatic increase of the amount of people that actually follow that content. Just because they get to see one screenshot of where they should be and where they're going. You do videos, same way. You can walk them through everything. Document the question before it even comes to you. If you're having a new release of a product, go through every single possible thing that could happen in that product. That anything that can go wrong, any hooks that are involved in that, any hooks that are there in, that, in the code, any steps that the customer may take, and, and their entire path that goes through. Document every bit of that, and then those questions won't come. You can already be ready to go when you launch that product and say, here's all of our documentation on our new version. Keep your document updated. How many of you often update your documentation constantly after you make every single change? Good. That's good. Make sure you keep everything up to date. Because if I'm looking at your stuff and I'm expecting one return value from this hook and I'm getting something completely different, I'm going to be confused. I'm going to contact you and say, well, why is this not, why am I not getting what I expect out of this? And likely, it's because you just haven't updated your documentation since the, new, since the latest release. Always keep everything in updated. And that will actually increase your support tickets if you don't keep it updated. Target search engines. How many of you search Google before you search the actual documentation site? It should be all of us. We do the same thing. If you target Google and make sure that your content is ranking properly, then people are more likely to find that documentation. I'm not likely to go to your site and search through your documentation. Your on-site search probably sucks. So make sure you search Google first, or make sure you target Google first, because most users are going to search there first. Comments on documentation are incredibly valuable. A lot of people don't enable comments in their articles. A lot of people just leave the article static, and if they have a question, they can submit a support ticket. Make sure you enable comments. Obviously, moderate them, but enable them. And the reason why is you'll have a user that has a question about, about the article you wrote. And they'll ask the question. Likely, they may even support it, put a support ticket, too, but we're not concerned about that. What we're concerned about is the person that comes in behind them and answers that question. And then the next person that comes in and looks at their article that had the same question that's in that comment, and it's already answered on that article now. At that point, you're then able to adjust your documentation or just leave that comment in there for another person to look for. Also, those comments likely will also add additional keywords to that article and help people find your content better through Google. User submitted documentation. This is something that not a whole lot of people take a look at and a lot of people even consider or realize that you can do something like this. This is something we did at InMotion when I was there and it helps so much. Because if somebody has a question about something and they miraculously found the answer, if they're the 
the awesome customer that you want in an ideal world. They'll make a write-up real quick of, this is the problem I have, this is how I solve it. It may not be great, it not, may not be the highest quality content, but it works. It allows you didn't have to, it allows you to not have to write that article, or maybe just edit it a little bit, as well as it answered somebody, somebody's question. Because if somebody took the time to write the content of the article, then somebody has that same question that the article answers. It helps you, it helps your users. It also helps the contributor because they may get a little kickback. Maybe they get some kind of imaginary points on their site. Or maybe they get just a backlink to their site or some kind of credit that they want. Maybe they're trying to get out and just guest post some places. This definitely helps. Now you can generate traffic with documentation. And we'll show you how you can do that as well. Documentation will actually increase your sales. Why? Because overlapping keywords with your competition. If you provide the exact same, in, it's the exact same functionality as your competition does, and you can have better documentation, likely if somebody's searching for a solution on the plugin that they're already using, and, they, and they, they, they're searching keywords, and all of a sudden they start getting the articles that you have, then they're likely to switch over to you. Because you're already answering all their questions that their existing plugin's not answering. If your documentation is better than your competition, chances are your plugin's better as well. I look at things and when I'm, when I'm searching for if, if this plugin is a solution, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll say, where's their documentation? Can I, can I find it? Is, is everything well documented? Is everything nice and organized? Are they professional about this? If the answer is yes, likely I'm going to go, over, go to that versus somebody who's not professional with it, that doesn't have good documentation, that's not going to provide you the highest level of support possible. Now, if your plugin can do it, write about it. This is something that I wrote at InMotion, and it was disabling the WordPress hardware. Believe it or not, a lot of people like to do it. A lot of people either like to disable it completely, only enable it on certain pages, things like that. So what we did is we wrote an article on disabling the WordPress hardware. As you see, InMotion ranks right here, which is an article that I wrote. It also even ranks now for the keyword WordPress heartbeat. It is now number one search. It's an article I wrote on November 17, 2014. Now what we did with that is now if you go to that page, this is what you hit. Disabling the WordPress Heartbeat API, and then it says, install my plugin. Funnel that traffic to exactly where you want to go, and you'll generate additional <coughs> traffic to your plugin. So in this case, for example, this plugin was released in November, and currently it has, right around according to .org, right around 4,000 active installs. The only way it's been promoted is from this article, as well as Jeff wrote an article on, on that as well on the tab. But aside from that, that's the only way it's been promoted. And it's already 4,000 active installs and continuously climbing. Wait. It's all about end users? Is that the only people we're trying to help? No. We're going to try to help some developers as well. If you don't document your code, you should feel bad. All of you should be crying if you don't document your code. And you should Make sure you document absolutely everything you can use in your code. And I love documents. If you can do it, give me the return values of your hooks. Give me any possible solutions to anything I can possibly do inside that code. Because I don't want to dig. I just want to find it. I want to look real quick. Figure out what's going on. Use code examples. Code examples are awesome. You can use those on the front end, your front end of your site. You can use them inside your code. Code examples are awesome. I want to know how this is supposed to work so that I can write it back. If you're going to go hard, go hard or go home. That's it. If you're going to write, if you're going to write, if you're going to write documentation, don't have it. <clears throat> Include both inline documentation as well as external. Make sure you document absolutely everything in all the places that you possibly can. <coughs> Don't assume that other developers are as smart as you. This comes back to writing things like a fifth, like a fifth grader. Make sure that your developers are able to understand everything that you're writing. If they can't understand it, there's no, business, there's no point in writing. Help out the ones that are smarter than you. 
Don't assume everybody's stupid. Make your content easily scannable. I don't want to read through absolutely every little tiny thing. I want to be able to say, okay, I want to click on this and see all the books. So make things easily scannable and make it easy for me to get to where I need to get to. For example, on the Gravity Form site, we have a solution where you can, just, you can either go through your user documentation, developer documentation, changing, changing styles, changing functionality, extending it using the, using the Gravity Forms API. It's like that. We separate all that content out. So I don't get to content that I don't need. I get exactly to where I'm trying to go. Good documentation also encourages contribution. If I'm able to understand how you do things, I'm now able to understand how I can better contribute in that way. So if you document things well, they may contribute. For example, if you're trying to, one of the great things that I am going to be soon implementing into gravityhelp.com is a full snippets solution. So everybody's going to be able to enter in whatever snippets they want and enter it in. It's going to be slightly moderated, obviously, to make sure that nobody puts anything dirty into it. But, <laughs> and dirty, I mean destroy someone's oh. site. <laughs> no, no more. No, none of that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to allow for code snippets. So somebody can just go, all right, cool, I, this is a quick little snippet that I wrote up that's, that solves this problem that I had. Just submit it, and they're good to go. Documentation encourages good contribution. If I don't have that information, nobody can, nobody can contribute their snippets. So let's take a look at what we've learned. And this one a little short, 20 minutes, it's not too bad. So let's look at what we've learned here. So you want to write like your customers are 10 years old. Some of them might be, who knows? I was writing code when I was 10 years old. Be proactive. Do things before the issue. Take care of the issue before it even arises. You already know when somebody's going to have a problem with what you're doing. So make sure you document it first. Use visuals. Make sure everything looks nice and perfect. And target search engines. Any questions? Um, well, the WordPress.org documentation isn't awesome for newbies. Right. So we get a lot of like really one-on-one level WordPress questions that don't have that aren't necessarily connected to our products. Mm -hmm. So where do you begin your documentation? Installing WordPress. Installing WordPress. <laughs> Start from there. I mean, any any questions that you're getting more than once, mm -hmm. document them on your own site. Even if documentation exists somewhere else, but it's not as good as you feel like it could be, document it. Document it on your own site. And just say this is this is how we recommend going about it. Now you may you run into a little bit of overlapping content and things like that, but it's really at that point all about helping the customer and making sure that they take the path that they, that you want them to take. Anything else? No. Cool.